There's a lot of devices aboard Curiosity that are trying to suck the life out of our batteries. Now I don't want to go into detail about our battery bank because I kind of did that in our lithium battery post which I'll link to here. Today I want to talk about charging because on Curiosity we have four different ways to charge our batteries. I've also got a couple dream ways that I want to talk about. Ah, <sighs> lamenting. Anyway, <laughs> charging, that's what we're doing today. Before we move on too far, I just want to have, I guess, a little disclaimer. I'm not an electrician, I'm not a professional, but we have been living in a small space with the RV and the boat for about eight years or so. So we know what works for us generally. Anyway, that's my disclaimer. Nobody paid for this video. It's not about any specific product or any brand. Let's dive in. First thing you definitely want to have is a battery monitor. Most sailboats come with something that looks like this, a little analog meter. They're horribly unreliable and they're not accurate. So this is our battery monitor. This little guy here. And what it is, it's kind of like our fuel gauge. And it tells us how much power is going in and how much power is coming out of our battery bank. If you don't know what a battery monitor is, <laughs> Cleo's eating right now. <laughs> if you can hear, if you don't know what a battery monitor is, <laughs> we uh, did a video a while back in the RV and that kind of explains exactly what it does. I think this is one of the most important things to have if you're living off the grid, um, especially one of the most important things to start with. Before you add solar, before you add anything else, one of these little guys. And I chose this one because it's really cheap and it's pretty darn accurate. Another device you definitely want is an amp clamp. <laughs> Notice I don't have one. I talked myself in and out of buying one before we left Fort Lauderdale. And now every time I have an issue or a question and I call Go Power or just Catamarans or whomever to get help or advice, they say, well, put an amp clamp on it, we can tell. I didn't buy an amp clamp. So, buy an ant clamp before you go. I'll link to the one that I like in the post, uh, maybe in the YouTube description. Also, another important thing, if you're wondering how we convert our power from 12 volt to 110, you do need an inverter for that, but this video is not really about inverters, just about the chargers. But the charger's kind of built into the inverter, so it kind of is. Anyway, <laughs> totally different point. Let's get on to charging, which starts out here. Every sailboat, every RV I've ever been on has had shore power. That's the first kind of standard way. You go to marina, you plug in. Ours is set up with two different 30 amp cords. So you have two different cords that go into the pedestal. Now not every pedestal has two 30 amp plugs, so we also have this Y cable that converts the two 30 amps into one 50 amp connector. And this is an easy way every now and then just to go to a marina, top up, make sure your batteries are truly at 100%. It is important to do every now and then. Not my favorite thing to say, but it's nice to plug in sometimes. Run the AC, <laughs> yeah. stop, use all the water. Suck up all the electricity. Mm, yeah, it feels good when it's hot. <laughs> uh, the next way that every boat I've ever been on also has to charge their batteries is the engines. Well, technically the alternators. Because Curiosity is a catamaran, we have two engines and two alternators. They're 80 amp alternators. They're just the factory ones that were built standard with the Yanmar engines. We do have 40 horsepower engines, if you're wondering. I've never, ever seen the engine produce 80 amps because I think some of it's just lost. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a professional. Let me show you exactly the amperage that one engine is bringing in. Okay, back to that battery monitor. Got the engine on, just one. And I've let it warm up so the battery in the engine room is the engine start battery, obviously, is fully charged. So now it's bleeding over power into our house bank. For those that are wondering, I have all solar off. I have every 12 volt device off. So this is just raw, exactly what the engine alternator is putting in. It's putting in 25 amps at idle. Now, one second, I'm gonna go put it up to 2000 RPMs. We're gonna see if it changes. Ready? Ready.
Okay, I have the engine revved up to 2000. We're bringing in about 27, 28 amps. That's about as much as I've ever seen because normally when we're motor sailing or just motoring, we have other devices on like the nav gear, maybe the autopilot, um, the refrigerator, all that. On a good day, this is like the maximum performance we should expect to see out of our 80 amp alternator. It works, it's just not my favorite way. Alright, so here's why it's not my favorite way to charge. We're consistently pulling 15 to 25 amps out of our battery bank, and that's all based on is a freezer kicking on, is the fridge running, is a laptop plugged in, is the water pump going. All these things are sucking the life out of our battery, so running one engine, one engine will do about 25 amps, and that's barely, barely enough to cover kind of our standard use. So I would have to actually turn on both engines to be putting in a positive 25 amps into our battery bank. If you notice on the battery monitor when I was scrolling through, we're about 300 amp hours down. 300 amp hours would take approximately 10 hours of running both of the engines just to get our batteries back to 100%. Each engine uses half a gallon per hour or more of diesel, so that's 10 hours, that's 10 gallons of diesel. That's a lot of diesel. That's a lot of wear and tear on the engines. That means I have to service it more. That means the value of the boat's now gone down because we now have 10 additional hours per day on our engines. Anyway, it's like a snowball. Snowball. Uh, that's why it's not my favorite. So we'll move on to generator? Generator. Generator. So this still isn't my favorite way to charge, but it's definitely a little quieter than running the engines and way more efficient. This is a Northern Lights 6KW generator. When I fire this baby up, it sends power to our charger, and our charger will cram in 100 amps per hour into our battery bank. So think about that. That's two times more efficient than running both engines. Two times. More than two times, probably. Anyway, that part's amazing. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Oh, yeah. While the power is going, charging those batteries, we have plenty more power left over to run the water maker. We can do a load of laundry. Nikki can cook. It burns about a half a gallon per hour of diesel. Thankfully, it's connected to the same tank. Sure, there's another engine to service. There's fuel smells. There's noise. Uh, oh, and it's really expensive, but we did not have to pay for it. It was already installed on our boat when we bought it. So it's a great tool for charging our batteries, but it's still not my favorite. Let's move on. It's my favorite charger method. So in total, we have 1400 watts of solar power. That's all of this. The solar arch we had custom built at Just Catamarans, uh, it's all part of the dinghy davit system. It provides more shade for the cockpit and it helps protect the dinghy. It's nice for rain. Anyway, we've really been happy with it. These five panels came from the RV, so they're three or so years old. Still working great, they have like a 25 year warranty. When we were in the Bahamas, we decided that the rigid panels that originally came on the boat, there was like three randomly placed rigid panels. Uh, we felt that they were dangerous. Lines would get caught in them. You couldn't walk on them. Um, you'd have to be tippy-toeing around the corners because it was, I don't know, it just felt sketch. So that's why we went with the flexible panels. We had a really, really good luck with these in the RV. You can walk on them. Yes, they're a little bit hot. Yes, they get a tiny bit slippery when it rains, but not more so than anything else. This particular one is way cheaper. Hey guys, verduras? Si, uh, cinco minutos? Si, gracias. <laughs> As the veggie guy. <laughs> He'll come back in five minutes. Uh, but what we really like about these is they're way more affordable than like the boat standard, like sailboats and other boats. You see some Italian ones that are super expensive. Eh, another story. Anyway, that's it. That's our solar setup, and that's my favorite way to charge. But I still have ways that I dream about. And that's what we'll talk about next. Wait, wait! Oh, sorry, we forgot something. What? Uh, cost and oh, efficiency. Efficiency, how did I not even think about it? Okay, the amps that we pull in on a regular basis, if it's, well, shady like this, it was sunny two minutes ago, well, you saw. <laughs> When it's really super shady, we're bringing in 20, 15, 20 amps. When it's sunny, 
We are bringing in 60, 70, 80. I haven't seen 90 yet, but I bet it's possible. And as far as price goes, I'm not really sure on pricing because we brought five of the panels from the RV. Um, the dinghy davit system was all built into the price of the, it's gonna be different for every boat, but yes, solar is crazy expensive, but we still think it's 100% worth it. 100%. Okay, okay, moving on. Back to my dreams. So it is four o'clock ish maybe 4 30 by now i don't know but anyway it's been a fairly cloudy day right now we have sunshine but it's been minutes. in and out we are at 80 percent ish right now and that's pretty good yeah we'll use 20 more percent when the sun's gone we use about 20 percent from the morning and if tomorrow's sunny then we'll be at 100 percent by this time tomorrow yeah so our setup that as is works well yeah but in a perfect world there is i think one thing we would do if time and money were no object right then i think the f one thing we would do would be get rid of the generator altogether because we don't like how heavy it is mm -hmm. we don't like the location that it is in the boat because that's a very valuable space that it takes up but most importantly is it lists the boat in a way that i'm not a big fan of it, just because it is so heavy and it's way in the back in the corner. Yeah. It just affects our water line. I don't like it. Well, and it's one more thing to have to service and maintain. Yeah. One more engine. Uh, we have two of those already. So if we could upgrade our alternators. Yes. Before we left Fort Lauderdale, just catamarans, we talked to them about it. Mm -hmm. They tried to convince us and then we unconvinced ourselves and uh, <laughs> we went. It was like a tennis match back and forth for the entire yeah. month. And it's these 230 amp alternators. So imagine if we could just turn on an engine mm -hmm. for one hour, pump in 200 amps into our battery. It's, that's double the efficiency of the generator and yes. that's just one engine and we have two. So that would be a, an excellent way to go and we would be able to ditch the generator altogether, but the retrofit takes time yeah. and we've, money and we we've already both. got the generator in there and it works fine. Yes, it's hard to replace something that's still functioning. Yeah. The other thing we went back and forth on, and we almost, we were like this close of pulling the trigger and Kent talked us out of it, yeah. the Watt and C hydro generator. Yeah, we really like the idea of the hydro generators, but the problem with it for us is our particular boat. Yeah. Our sugar scoops are so thin and it's not, we need a bigger space for an install. So no matter how we looked at it, there was really no good option for an install. Kent was like, sure, I can charge you and figure something out, but it's not going to be yeah. ideal. And I have no guarantee it's not going to rip off when you get big <laughs> exactly. seas. <laughs> so no, that it's yeah. not, it was not good for our particular boat. Now, if we had sugar scoops like the new catamarans that are this big, yeah. heck yeah. Heck yeah, that thing would be on there. Yeah, it's excellent for passage making. If you're actually gonna spend a good amount of time moving at sea, I think that is an excellent option. Yeah, probably not the best addition for a coastal cruiser. You're gonna just do day sails, but. For us, yeah. full time, constantly moving it would have been huge. around the world. Yeah, absolutely, it would have been, would have been a good one. So while we're on hydro generator, mm -hmm. let's talk about wind generation. A lot of people ask us about wind generators. Why don't we have a wind turbine? There's no good spot to put one on this boat, no. plain and simple. I think very much like the hydro generator, there's really not a good option. We did ask about it just to inquire, but then on top of that, they're really not. The jury's out. We talked to yeah. so many people that have them and they, most of them are just okay with them or they hate them. <laughs> I don't know if we've talked to anybody that's like, I love it, it's the perfect, it's the best thing, it's perfect. Yeah, there ha we haven't talked to anybody that has one that has said that yet. There are plenty of people that say they are, it can be they great. Good, yeah. yeah, and it's nice to be able to produce power overnight, overnight you yeah. know, when the solar isn't working. Uh, but it's noisy, and there is one guy that we talked to that had an absolute horror story and scar. He installed his, which install placement is very yes. important. Uh, he is slightly, slightly too low too low and he went to wave goodbye to somebody and nearly lost a few fingers over that one So yes, it's a cautionary tale exactly and from what we've been told and what we've read and the specs on most of them you can get between 10 amps to 20 amps depending on your models, uh, but you need a ton of wind quite a bit of wind to produce that amount of amperage and that would just barely even keep up with our constant draw from our battery bank so 
that's why we haven't installed a wind generator. Yeah. So what's next? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Hydrogen generator? Yeah. <laughs> nuclear power? No, no nuclear <laughs> power. That's really not, not good. <laughs> uh. But there might be something out there that we don't know about yet. Maybe there's some sort of... Amazing sail that has solar power. Oh. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, which, that would still only work when you're yeah, sailing. So, true. you know. I don't know. Yeah, so if you know about anything, tell us about it in the comments below. If you saw anything in the video today that you want to know more about, like the way we have our solar set up, uh, I could have dove in deep to every little minute detail, but then it would have been a three hour video and you would not have made it this far. Yeah, <laughs> or if you want to know more about any of the, I don't know, the MP yeah. or the inverter or any of it, yeah. leave us a comment, comment down below. If we get enough of a request, then we will certainly put together a video. And we have a ton of information from all of our yes. past setups in the RV world and even on this boat from kind of how we've been slowly building. You can check those out. Um, we have one page dedicated to off-the-grid living. Put a link somewhere so you can check that. Yeah, so hopefully this is educational, like in a good way, not in a boring... Like, holy crap, I just sat through that Pull whole your thing. teeth out sort Can't of get way. That, that time of my life back. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how we charge our batteries and it's really important. Oh, and next, I think now that we've gotten, we've talked about our batteries, we've talked about how we charge them, now we can start talking about how we use this lithium power. And that's yep. including the AC, how we run our air conditioning off of our batteries. We've been promising that one for a long time. It's really just one little, extra that allows you to do Don't that. Don't give it away. Yeah, Golly. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> Next time on. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Sayonara. Smoothie time. Hasta luego.